just giving you an overview of the waterproofs that I wear. So these are the waterproofs that go over the top of my normal motorcycle gear. Even though the motorcycle gear suggests that it might be waterproof, it saves me from getting totally drenched and having to try and dry out very heavy textile motorcycle jacket and trousers. So even though I've got some very posh Gore-Tex laminated jacket and trousers, when it's very, very wet, I'd still wear these over the top because it just saves the hassle of having to get back and drip dry everything and try and find a place in the house to, to dry out fully before I then go out again. These are not expensive waterproofs. They don't have to be expensive. I've chosen these ones because they come from a country clothing store and they're a bit more robust than your standard um, thin waterproofs that you would get from a motorcycle store or cheap waterproofs for outdoor wear. I've chosen this because it's quite stretchy. So this material has actually got a bit of stretch in it, which is quite useful. So if I give it a bit of a tug, it'll stretch quite nicely. And it's thick and it's very waterproof. The water just beads off on the outside. So it's a country clothing store, therefore it's green, <laughs> which means it's not particularly visible for any other traffic around. So I have purchased some reflective strips which I've stuck on and these happen to be purple not because I wanted purple but just because it was what was available at the time that I was purchasing them so I've stuck some on the sides and I've stuck some also on the back there we go so there's my reflective strips on the back I've made my super duper waterproof a little bit more visible for other road users particularly in the dark although when it is dark I tend to wear a reflective high vis over the top anyway so I multiple layer up when it's wet and cold outside and end up looking like the Michelin man, but I don't care. The trousers are very similar, exactly the same material. They've got some lovely stretch in the material, which makes them easy to get on and off even over my boots. Again, they have no reflective items on them at all. No reflective stickers or detailing, which is the plus point you will get if you buy something from a motorcycle shop. It's just, hello. That's the cat. It's just they don't last uh, as long as something as like this. I've had a pair of these for about 10 years now and they're really, really good. Good girl. This is, this is the cat. <laughs> boots. So. Hello. Uh, motorcycle boots. I use Daytona's very posh Gore-Tex Lady Pilots. I've got two pairs. One pair is no longer waterproof and the other pair remains waterproof. It is worth investing in some very good waterproof motorcycle boots it's very difficult to keep your feet warm and dry so i would recommend if you can afford it investing in a good pair my pair that are no longer waterproof i think that's my error because i used insoles in them which i think have cut into the gore-tex other equipment that we might need for going out in the wet is a good helmet which has a pin lock in it so the pin lock is this extra layer, if you don't know, most people know what a pinlock is, but some people don't. So the extra plastic layer, which is on the inside of the visor, it's under there, and it's held in place with these little pins. And that acts as your double glazing, so it stops you from steaming up on this main central band area, which is where your main vision is. So all the way across here, it tends, it tends not to steam up, and it'll steam up around the edges. Sometimes, however, if you don't keep the inside of the pinlock clean, which you can only do with a very, very soft cloth, otherwise you'll scratch it. If you don't keep it clean, it will steam up on the inside of the pinlock as well. I've had it before where it just starts to dip down from the top and work its way up from the bottom. So keeping the inside of the pinlock clean just with a very gentle soft cloth and a gentle soap is very useful. If you don't have a pin lock in your helmet and there's no provision for it, some helmets have the holes but no pin lock, some helmets have no pin lock at all, you can use just a very tiny amount of washing up liquid. Just rub, rub it with your fingers on the inside of the visor and that will stop the visor from steaming up. It doesn't work for very long, only a couple of rides for example, and you need to clean it off and then do it again. But it is a halfway house to getting a pin lock, or you can buy adhesive pin locks now. Um, the ones that don't have the pins, but you can buy them and they just stick on the inside of your visor. Make sure your visor is totally clean before you stick anything on it though, otherwise it won't stay there. So you need to use an alcohol wipe first. That's bye bye from me. And bye bye from Melody.